Hello, folks. Welcome to Nate Land. Uh, if you're watching this, uh, Brian quit. <laughs> All right. Now, oh God, he's still here. Uh, sorry, guys. Sorry. No, I got, I got back is, in. This is uh, uh, we had to uh, pre-record this to make sure you know we expect one of these guys not to make it during the whole run. <laughs> so. Trying to get it in, you know. <laughs> yeah. The all the listeners have odds. You guys are on DraftKings. Really? Yeah. Who's the favorite? To make it and not make it? Yeah. They think Brates is going <laughs> to die in this room. He ain't going anywhere. Uh, Aaron, they think that you will go back to construction. <laughs> I don't know why they said that, but that's what they. I think they assume you do construction. Yeah. 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 You know, you got the construction look. Do I? No, I don't. Like Sunny that. D. That's what they usually wear. <laughs> that's what they yeah. drink sometimes. Yeah. I guess you don't have it. Yeah. You you would be, you like, you know, the construction look of, you know, what's funny is like wearing those, wearing a shirt like that. I like that shirt. But like construction workers will wear shirts like that. Yeah. Like you see them like, it's like a polo shirt and they're just wearing it to get dirty. Mm -hmm. Like it's a shirt that's made for hard labor. Yeah. And then it's our nice, it's also your nice shirt. <laughs> Tuck it in. I don't know. All right. This is why this is. Uh, this week, you're actually listening to a pre recorded episode, but we wanted to give a big shout out today to Helix Sleep. Take their two minute sleep quiz and they will match you to a mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattresses orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Nate. That's up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash Nate. Also, Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform that has thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, anxiety, depression, relationships, anything that you need. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals. For $100 off your first month, go to talkspace.com and use the code Nate. That's code Nate at talkspace.com for $100 off your first month. Uh, so we're going to get into it. We're going to uh, just go ahead and uh, we start with the comments. Uh, first up, Rochelle, Rochelle Cordell, or Rachel, probably Rochelle. I thought the E-L-L-E -L -L -E was. Uh, that right. would be a weird way to spell Rachel. And I yeah. like Rochelle Cordell. Just Rochelle having a name Cordell. that rhymes like that is pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Rochelle Cordell. Hey, you um, Rochelle Cordell. It's like oh. a law office. It uh, does a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Rochelle Cordell, law, law, law offices. News anchor, something like that. Thank you for creating a podcast that is family friendly. My husband and I love that we can listen with our kids. In fact, our 10 year old son listens to episodes as he falls asleep. Just when we think he's asleep, we will hear a laugh. And then in the morning, he gives a recap of his favorite lines from the night before. He had to give a presentation at school this week and made sure to include some jokes. When I picked him up from school, he was so excited to tell me that he got the most laughs. And in his words, he killed it. Keep up the great work. We look forward to seeing all of you perform live, hopefully hopefully sooner rather than later. Well, that is awesome. Killed it. He's using the right the yeah. right words. Yeah. <laughs> he killed it. The words in comedy are, are tough. He killed it. I murdered last night. Yeah. Like It's a lot of that. But yeah. yeah, he did. He killed it. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's great. Nathan Smith, we have a saying in my family that perfectly describes people like Nate. Often wrong, never in doubt. <laughs> At least three to four times per podcast, he lives out that idiom. Often wrong, never in doubt. So, like, I'm all I'm wrong a lot, but I always assume I'm right. You're confident. I'm confident. How you feel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I do say I don't know. I could say I don't know a lot, but yeah, yeah, yeah I get that. <laughs> That's what this is, you know? It's like you're it's it's just your world. It's like, I don't know, dude. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows any of this stuff? Idiom. Uh <laughs> start calling your family idioms. Yeah. <laughs> A bunch of idioms. Jordan Jordan Lundin. Nate, I think YouTube has cinched your lack of grammar. The only ads on this podcast have to do with Grammarly, a program that changes your sentences to sound smarter. <laughs> YouTube is like your mini adjunct professor. <laughs> Are they that? They know that much. I don't know. They're they're that much. Their YouTube's in it. Because my grammar would be that bad. You know, it's like I've thought about should I try to fix my grammar, but then I just don't think so. That's what I. <laughs> that's when I think about it. Then I go, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> well, I don't think it's as bad as everybody no, I jokes think you about. Speak very good. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. There you go. It is good. Uh, Tom Letteri. Letteri. Let her in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tom Letteri. My favorite recurring bit is Nate interrogating Aaron about the words his family may or may not use around the dinner table. In a segment, I'm calling, is that how y'all talk? <laughs> it feels like anytime Aaron uses a word with more than two syllables, it's like blood in the water for Nate, and it makes me laugh every time. <laughs> I'm curious to see the long-term effects this has on Aaron's vocabulary going forward. Keep up the smart shaming. That's what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. Everybody shames dumb people, but maybe right. smart people need to get shamed a little bit. Yeah. Right? Okay. So you know what it feels like to live I'll on the other it. side of the tracks. Because mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> he'd be brought down. Yeah. You up there. Do you, li- like, what do you do right after a podcast? Go drink tea or something? <laughs> Is that, like, just to get it? You know what I mean? Like, just to I get I put it. my monocle back on. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, yeah, then I go. And then you get in the car and your driver goes, how was it? And you go, you know, you know how it was. And then... <laughs> I don't even think it, I'm joking that you come for money. It's just you're that smart that you were able to talk your way into getting a driver. Yeah, just convince some guy he to be my driver. Him. Yeah. And he goes, I guess I should do it. <laughs> That's my favorite part too, Tom. Devin Alexander. What's up, folks? Nate, Aaron, and Brian. I myself am a fellow comedian. If you guys ever do an episode about dreams, I just want to know if you have ever, if you have ever or still do have dreams where you gain insight and material for your stand-up. I've received, I've received some of the best bits that I have from my dreams where I've popped up wide awake at 3 a.m. to write something down so I can remember it. I love the show. I've been listening to every episode without missing one. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Devin. Uh, yeah, I've had uh, – I've definitely had a lot of great thoughts. Sometimes they don't pan out to be that way, and you write them down, and you're like, what was I thinking? <laughs> uh, like it's like Seinfeld bit. What did he write down? Uh that's an old. That's an old episode where he wrote down something. He went to the psychic. Yeah, went to the psychic, and he writes down a joke. He's like, "I was trying to write down. I wrote this down yeah, in my yeah, sleep." Yeah. It was funny. Is he predicted the guy predicted a score of a yeah. Spurs that just happened? Uh, yeah, I saw that I recently. Saw that. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it's like from ninety or ninety, I think. Yeah. And it said Spurs beat the yeah somebody and had the score right. Had the exact score right. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. wild. Uh, but yes, I do. The key to it is to write it down. Just always write it down. There's still times I'll lay there and I go, and I'll remember it. And sometimes you do remember it, and then sometimes you're just like, you know, and you just think about it. What was there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can't remember it. So it is best to write it down. You do, yeah. I feel like your your brain's the kind of freest at that point, and you're trying to go to bed, and that and then you can't because your brain just keeps going. But yeah. Uh, that's great. That's Have a good way to do it. I don't remember anything from dreams, anything concrete. Like I'll wake up and realize I just had a nightmare and I was like, oh man, that was awful. But I don't remember anything that happens in them. You have a lot of nightmares? I have been lately. Yeah. 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 Why? Like two weeks in a row. What just about? a nightmare every night. I don't know what they're about. I just wake up and I know that I just had a nightmare. Do you I don't remember any details. <laughs> do you go? <sighs> That's just the sleep apnea. Yeah. But uh <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know what's causing it. Yeah, with the nightmares. Wow, we got a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> Seth Lynch. We need a Nate Land golf classic. The neighbor gets the Aaron Weber Memorial Gout Awareness Pro Am for the cure. <laughs> you think it's the gout that's calling you the nightmare? <laughs> I don't think that's a uh office reference. The rabies, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Michael yeah. Scott. <laughs> oh yeah. Something for the cure. <laughs> Something for the cure. They solved it already. For, for Meredith. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, she got hit by a car and they did, they did rabies. <laughs> yeah, she had rabies. <laughs> uh, I want to know why you have nightmares. I'm trying to think if I have nightmares. I mean, I, I definitely have just like a scary dream. Yeah. Like, uh, I've definitely had that, but it's not often. This is the first time I've had just a string of them. Mm-hmm. And do you just wake up in a sweat? No, I just wake up like, oh man. And I just know that I just went through something. Yeah. Yeah. Scary, but I don't know. I don't, don't even know. remember what it was. No, I don't remember what they're about at all. Yeah. Huh. Are you in the street? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. You're just outside. No, I, I'm never like falling either. I don't I don't know what it is. Our buddy Dusty, you know, that was in the hospital, he said he was on some hard drugs and yeah. he had some crazy dreams. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even while he was sitting in a chair, he would just shut his eyes and tell his wife what he was. It was like yeah. he was dreaming while he was awake. Wow. wow. 
Like, I would pay money to see his dreams. <laughs> yeah. Just dusties. You know, they always talk about <laughs> lucid dreaming. We yeah. Do, like where it's like you experience. Hey, have you ever had homes. one before? Uh, you uh, can apparently train yourself to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think like Pete Holmes mm. does them. Ray Romano had them, like where it's like they really believe they're flying. Wow. And then, like, uh, yeah, it seems like it'd be, I guess it'd be fun. The training of it, where like you got trained to do it, you're like, all right, dude, I'm not. <laughs> I don't want it this bad. Yeah, it's like you're trying to go to bed and you're, it, it's like you gotta, it's a real thing to like train yourself and you're like, I don't, I'm not doing all that, man. Aaron studied it in college. <laughs> Lucid Dream? You had a class. No, I didn't Did it. you? No, I didn't go to Hogwarts, dude. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, not far <laughs> off. Notre Dame is what it's based off. Notre Dame would be what I would imagine is the closest to Hogwarts. There is. The dining hall on campus does look just like the, the Great Hall in Hogwarts. People yeah. always called it that. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why Notre Dame feels like that, but it's like the what they're wearing. It's like a proper school. We're wearing normal clothes. No. We're not wearing cloaks, you know? I think y'all do. I think if you'd have stayed a little longer, you'd have seen those cloaks. Uh, <laughs> if you'd have gre- majored in philosophy, yeah, that's when they bring it got the degree. Yeah. Brett Skinner. Hey, Nate, Aaron, and Bark. <laughs> Long-time fan, first-time folk. What do you guys think about being invited to be a groomsman and being told you have to go, you have to go buy expensive clothes for the wedding? I've always felt like when someone asks you to be in his or her wedding, it's pretty rough if they're making you go spend a bit of money on clothes that you may never wear again, especially since it's not like you can really say no when they ask. Hmm. 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 Uh, you know, it depends. Like, yeah, you do. Everybody has to go buy their own tux. That is always kind of crazy. It's your wedding, but it's it's like when you get married, you're like, well, I can't afford to buy everybody's tuxes. Right. Yeah. Uh, and if you go make them buy something really nice, a couple hundred bucks. I mean, honestly, it depends on like how old you are and stuff like that. If you're 24 and you're making some other 24 year olds do stuff i mean you can be like what do you want me to do man i'm yeah. 24 yeah if you're ask if your groomsmen are in their 30s yeah they can probably be they, it's a little bit better yeah they probably have more money but if you're asking like college kids to be like go spend how much is the tux like two three hundred bucks you should know you're getting ready for this yeah i'm doing this right now it is awkward because i have to get my groomsmen they have to go get fitted for a tux and then they have a bunch of comedians that have uh two comedians um (laughs) three guys who claim to be comedians. yeah apparently it's not me and (laughs) not two in this room i guess but it is it is like it it costs like just like 200 bucks to rent it and it's so awkward to ask somebody to and that's not you're not going super crazy with no it's just a like one of the more basic ones yeah yeah But I've done it a few, I've been in a few weddings and it's just something you have to do. Yeah. You know, you're a close friend of that person. So that's kind of the deal. That's kind of the deal. Yeah. It's it's part of it. And if you were in that, like, yeah, I mean, truthfully, if you're close, if you were like, dude, I can't, I can't afford to, you know, for some reason you had to say, you're like, I don't have money right now, dude. Uh, Mm -hmm. It is, it is a weird thing. Which is the women have to buy their, they, yeah, they do do dresses. I don't know. Theirs are even crazier. Probably. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 200 bucks, too? Could be. Could be. Could be. There's this little Nate Land spinoff over here. Yeah. What's going on? It's a... Uh, Brian Land. It's a... Uh, <laughs> we're doing fashion. <laughs> She's been uh, waiting all these episodes to finally speak up on something. Yeah. <laughs> finally, something I'm interested in. That's what we just talked to the... And that's how we talked to the woman. All right, we'll talk to the lady. Hey, what are dresses like? <laughs> and you're like, all right, well, she can talk about other things. You're like, can she? <laughs> Why are shoes so tight? <laughs> now, are you getting the groomsmen all a gift? Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to. <laughs> yeah. I'm I don't know. I'll talk. think, I'll give think them, of like, something. A flask or that's what people get. You give them a flask. I was going to have a custom bobblehead made of everybody. Yeah. I thought that would be a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then but, they got to keep that for the rest of their life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, I mean. You don't think that. I was trying to think of something. Unique. I mean, look, the ship's probably sailed on that. I, I'm getting married in a month. I can't have all that done. You know, like I always think uh, a money clip's not bad. Like a it's something clip. that like that they would be like, you know what? I, if someone's got a wallet and they're like, oh, you know what? I'd like to try a money clip. And I remember I got a money clip once and you're like, oh, it's fun. It's something that I don't have. Do you use a money clip I still? use a money clip now. Oh. I don't use that one, but I've used one now. I use one now. I I've like gotten it. knives and flasks and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, money clips, you can have their initials on them. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, just like, I think if you think of something that someone would want, 
to be like, oh, I would like to try that. You know, and usually it's something very, you know, you can give them a notebook. Like uh, someone just send me a notebook. But, the, you know, if you want to do that, like, you know, I don't mm-hmm. know, just something that they think even they're like, yeah, I think I do want to try this. And maybe they don't. But maybe a bobblehead would be, you know, <laughs> they might like a bobblehead. Of you give them all bobblehead is of you. <laughs> <laughs> of themselves. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, they might like that. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, where are we at? Uh, Stephen <laughs> Stephen Pelkey. Can we get an episode about production, the stage hands that make shows happen? Also, can we be introduced to the crew in the room? You cannot. Uh, we've been talking to them. Yeah. Yeah. Do y'all want to introduce yourselves? Is it be? Uh, no one can hear you. <laughs> She's like, I didn't ask to be. Yeah. You got to yell real loud. <laughs> That's Chris. It. Tristan. Behind. Tristan. Tristan. I always said Tristan. <laughs> he goes by either. Caleb is only on air and yeah. land, so he's not here today. Yeah. Caleb is usually on air and land. Yeah. That's uh there we go. Everybody's everybody's in. It's a yeah. fun crew. It's a fun crew. Uh yeah, we could do an episode on production. Like, you know, how they make stuff. You know, when I did my pilot, I always sound like <laughs> I just did comedy forty years ago. <laughs> you guys don't know what it's like. But to see the crew on that. Is yeah. I mean, it's a hundred people. Yeah. The guys that are building the sets and stuff like that, they just build them uh, everywhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, they just go in and like the, them getting stuff set up, how specific the designers get stuff. It's a very unique kind of thing to be like, hey, I need, I need a house. A, to make my, in the show, my parents' house was like, all right, I want my parents' house. I want a Southern house and I want it, but to be older. And like they made the kitchen really look, kind of old and specific they had a seat like a roller chair like like this kind of chair yeah computer chair they had that against in the dining room uh on the dining room table the kitchen table uh because it was like being like well this dad would want his own chair at the table and so it's like that kind of specific of a thing to be like well that's kind of describes the character of the guy yeah is like doing something like that so and then they had to design our house that was you know, uh, more like shiplac or whatever that is, you know, like make it look more Southern like that. Is there any chance yeah. that house could be used on another show? No, they used it. Uh, they actually used it for something. God, what was that for? Because they asked us to use it for something because they were going like another show was going in the their episode. They were going to a TV taping. So oh, I think they were going to okay. use ours. Mm-hmm. Which I almost need to know what that was. I wonder what that was. Maybe it was blackish or something. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, so they would have used it for that. Yeah. Which would be cool if I could see it yeah. on TV. I never really got into that. They like ask if that's okay. They like ask me and you're like, I don't, like am I even allowed to answer this? <laughs> like, like I'd be like, uh, no, we're good. Uh, Bill D- Billy Dempsey. Sounds like a baseball player. Mm-hmm. Billy Dempsey. Sounds like he's a good ball player. <laughs> Last week, I was playing solo behind a group of four, and they would not let me play through. About After about seven holes, I decided to lay up on my approach shot every time so that it would land about 20 yards from the green as they were putting. Nate, what are some of your biggest frustrations on the golf course? Uh, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Uh, I'll be back in 30. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> mine. Yeah, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you how to act on a golf course. <laughs> If you're not good, look, if you if you and your buddies, you and Aaron go play, neither one of you are good, <laughs> do whatever you want. Y'all can be the nonsense, but you got to keep it moving. Yeah. You feel like people behind you, let people through. Yeah. And like, be like, nah, we're just hitting it or whatever. Uh, just be very aware of what's going on. People are very oblivious. Uh, you can't, you, you know, like, I, th- I don't know if I talked about it. You can't cheat. You can't act like you don't cheat, but then you do cheat. That's my biggest thing. Someone that goes, I want to play for real, but they will cheat because they will take mulligans. They will kick the ball out if it's a hard shot and all this kind of stuff. So you can't cheat. And then when you get on the putting green, I got to watch you putt five times because you're not like, that's my problem. Yeah. We talked about that on the philosophy episode. Yeah. Oh yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen to the philosophy episode. Well, why wouldn't that group of four let them why would they not let him play through? People are just clueless. And yeah. if they're not, if they don't play, they don't know to let them play through. 
Public courses are the worst. If you go to a private course, everybody plays pretty quick because they know. And mm. usually you can tell if someone's out there with guests, that's the time they can get a little slow. But the member then, it's his job. It's not really the guest's job. It's the member's job if on a private course to be like, hey, we're going to let these guys play through. Is it the etiquette to, if you're playing slowly, you say, hey, play through? Yeah. Or do you ask to play through if you're going faster? You never ask. Oh. You're supposed to ask. So that's I mean, what this guy never got asked. This guy never got asked, Billy. and so he played behind him. And that's he was right. He was correct. Now, he was by himself. So if you turn and see a solo behind you, like a guy alone, I mean, absolutely. You just let that guy – that guy could tee off with you. Yeah. And he would – like, you can even do that. Like, here, we we're, we already hit, but go ahead and hit, mm-hmm. and then just play through us. And then he, he's going to get to his ball, hit again, finish the hole. And then if you do play through like that, you tend to – you kind of hit, you give yourself a gimme, you're probably going to get a par, like unless you're terrible. Because uh-huh. you're, you're a par or bogey, because you're going to just, you kind of hit, and then you kind of chip it up. You kind of speed up on that hole, and you give yourself a little, you know, you have like an eight-foot putt, you just kind of hit it, you go, ah, oh, that's good. Okay. And then, uh, you know. Have you ever got invited to be a guest with someone, but then they play really slow, so you feel awkward because you're holding people up, but you're the guest of the guys that you're playing with? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's you don't know what to do. And uh, mm-hmm. you just kind of, you know, because when I play, I play with guys now that are everybody's kind of good, so we, we, we play very quick. Uh, not super quick, but we can play in three hour, three and a half hours, three hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, depends if we're walking and stuff like that. But it's, yeah, I, I've definitely done that, where you've been with people and, and then they're not good. Mm-hmm. That's why I get asked to play a lot on the road, and it's it's just tough. You know, because it's like you just – but some guys will send me their handicaps just so you have an idea. <laughs> you know, if someone's like, I'm a five, and you're like, all right, all right yeah. that's what I am right yeah. now. So uh, you're it's, it's you're like, all right, this dude's going to be able to play. Under 10, eight, eight's good. You know, you start yeah. getting above 10, you're like, ah, boy. Oh, boy. What are you, Brian? It doesn't – it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's enough. I guess that's what, what it says. answer for me. It's enough. <laughs> He goes, well, it's it's every it's a stroke of hole. It's a twenty. He's got to be, a, I mean, a, at least a twenty, probably more. I mean, people will get higher, but you're gonna get a stroke of hole. Yeah, he will. He's been playing better. No, <laughs> <laughs> played the other day. You won in this when we played the other day. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. I don't know what you're talking about. Beat Aaron and Felix. Oh yeah, oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, he's he's better than what I realized now, and you can tell that you've gotten better. Because you're playing with people that don't play much, and you're beating them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's a pretty big difference. You know, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it up, Brian. Yeah. Thank you. I'd like to see if y'all went at it. But, mm-hmm. I mean, he would kill you. He'd have to give you strokes. You think he, Brian would kill me? I don't think I think so. he'd have to give you strokes. I think he would beat me. I don't think he'd kill me. I mean, when we I played mean, the other day, it was pretty close. I don't think it it? was at all. I think it was like 11 over and you were (laughs) one or two over. This was on a simulator, but it was, (laughs) yeah, I think it was pretty far off. And that's a, a, that was giving us 20 foot (laughs) gimme putts. You Uh, you played my buddy Michael and like you had to give him a stroke. You should have seen the glow on his face (laughs) when he had to go to Michael. All right, I'll give you a stroke on this hole. I mean, (laughs) his whole whole time we play is like, I'm giving him a stroke every hole. And then he gets to be like, I'll give you a couple of strokes. Now, re- at one point, he goes, no, nah, re-hit it. I'll let you re-hit it. Don't worry about it. Like this. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, Travis Kent, been gay, been gay, trying to defend <laughs> his research from Wikipedia is one of my favorite parts of this show. Since elementary school, I've been told never to use Wikipedia for research, yet somehow this podcast has 41 episodes centered around just that. Nate is right. School was pointless. Yeah, Wikipedia. Who can you trust? You what stands out there to me is he's been told that since elementary school. Wikipedia wasn't even a thing. I was in my <laughs> okay. 30s before Wikipedia <laughs> even became a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is crazy that it gets – that you, they tell you not to use Wikipedia. How does anybody not do it, though? I know. It's, it's just, just so, so easy, easy, dude, and everything is on there. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's way more reliable now. When it yes. first started, I remember being told that in school. Like, would you use Wikipedia? Like, that's like putting Google as your source. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just so much different now. I think. Yeah. 
Alec Richardson, Nate, you did a set on CMT host about Melissa Peterman early in your career, and you did a joke about time zones. And to this very day, anytime a time time zone is mentioned, my brother and I quote that joke. So happy to see your success. That is uh, that poster right there. Uh-oh. Taped it in 2007. Wow. Aired in February of 2008. Uh, and then that poster got me that gig, that college gig. Uh, but it was, yes, that's very funny. Yep. That was, that CMT, it was like John Reap, Mike Arms. It's, it's a good lineup. Yeah. Vic oh, Henley. Yeah, yeah. Vic Henley. Killer Bees. Killer Bees. Greg Hahn, Eda May, Trish Sewer, uh, Greg Warren, Kelly Trinova, uh, Tom Maybe or Mabe, Maybe. Gary Mule Deer has been around forever. John Wesley Austin, I think I'm missing everybody. Robert M- Hawkins. Mike Armstrong. Mike Armstrong. Robert Hawkins is very, very funny. Uh, Greg Warren's very, very – I mean, all of them are very, very yeah. funny. Uh, Gary Mule Dealer has been around. I mean, people might know. He's been around forever. He mm-hmm. lived with uh, Steve Martin. Yeah. Him and Steve Martin were roommates. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, so that that was the – yeah, the first TV, sh- TV thing I did, it was in Nashville, which was cool. Uh, so the first thing I got to do, and I stayed at the hotel next to Vanderbilt. Like oh, that's uh, cool. The Lowe's Vanderbilt? Yeah. Well, the one that you see, the yeah, the one uh, that's Marriott now, maybe. Oh, the from the football stadium? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we stayed there. And I remember I could have stayed home, but I was like, you know, I wanted to stay yeah. in the hotel. Dude, if you get like, a hotel room, you take yeah, it. Yeah, you're like, I got to stay in it. Uh, all right, Riley Fournier. But what was the joke? Uh, the time zone joke. Do you if, remember? Uh, joke about time zones. <sighs> what was it? I don't know. What time? I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't. Alec can write back in and tell yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, the one about your friend Kevin lives in Florida. Or not, yeah. not kept friend, but. Yeah, I did have a time zone joke. What, uh, yeah, I had the one about like, you know, someone's like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm from Tennessee. And they're like, oh, I have a friend named Kevin. He's in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Dude. I don't know. <laughs> You know, it was early on. Yeah. Uh, R- Riley Fournier. Brian, don't feel bad about your nose whistling. One time I was crouching down to pick something up in my bedroom and I heard a cat meowing. I stood up to look around, got on my stomach to look under the bed, but couldn't see anything. I crouched down again and heard more meowing. I called my wife in the room and she informed me that it was my wheezing <laughs> when I crouched. <laughs> that was making the sound. So at least you don't occasionally sound like a distressed animal when you breathe. Wow. <laughs> That's yeah, great. I think that's uh, yeah. Is that worse than gout, Aaron? <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, everybody. Thank you very much for writing in. As always, uh, I know some of you are sleeping on some old mattresses at night. Maybe while you listen to this podcast, trying to fall asleep, you know. And you deserve better than that. Give yourself an upgrade. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes two minutes and matches your body type and sleep preference. It's always fun to do those quizzes to figure out your body type of which mattress is the best to sleep on uh everyone is unique and helix knows that we have another comedian sleeping on our helix sleep mattress that has been just rounding out all sorts of bodies and uh for this week the graham k is sleeping on helix sleep mattress so you got a very fit body sleep (laughs) sleeping on it and it works wonderful If you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, order the mattress that you are matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door shipped for free. You don't, you don't, I mean, you don't ever have to go to a mattress store ever again. How great is that? And we've talked about opening it. It's the greatest thing ever. Helix is awesome. Uh, It was voted number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 and by GQ and Wired Magazine. Just go to helixsleep.com slash Nate, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they will match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Nate. Helixsleep.com slash Nate for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Also, uh, Talkspace.com. Mental Health Awareness Month, is a, it's a cool thing to celebrate, but it should not be our focus just for May. It is important to work on your mental health all year long, and Talkspace makes that so easy. It's good to go talk on with, with this is I mean talk space you guys should be all over it if you feel you need help this is the time you know with the year that everybody's had you everybody probably feels alone this is the great way that you can go talk to someone and it's private like you don't have to tell anybody you just mind your own business 
Talk to this person. Get yourself uh, fixed up. Talk space. It's very affordable. It's way less expensive than an in-person therapy. And you don't have to wait for an appointment. You don't have to go to the lobby and see people. You can just like do your own thing privately, which is what I think is uh, the best thing about it. Talkspace has thousands of licensed therapists with years of experience in over 40 specialties. With so many therapists available, you can find one that you really like. And that would be that that's the most important. As a listener of this podcast, you will get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code NATE to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's code NATE at Talkspace.com for $100 off your first month. So, uh, yeah, we did this one. Uh, I'm excited about this one. Good. I think so. Good. Well, we'll see. An we hour, will see. An hour from now, we'll check back in with you and uh-huh. see how you're feeling. So today we're talking about the Renaissance. <laughs> the Renaissance. Just going through periods of time. Today we're going to talk about 1982. <laughs> <laughs> we'll eventually get there. We did the Middle Ages. <laughs> People seem to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. People liked part. it. Yeah. So are we picking up right where we left off yep. with the Middle Ages? Yep. Yep. Renaissance was next. I know. I was thinking we should have go through all of these, you know, like all the time periods. You know, I told you that you because you asked me the other day what comes after that. And I read one place, the Enlightenment. Yeah, which, is after this. But then I read most places. I read just says the Renaissance led up to modern the modern age. Yeah, I think you can break it down different ways. Mm-hmm. What's before the Middle Ages? Was the Roman when the Rome ruled the world? Yeah, I don't know what they called that, but the Roman Empire. Yeah. So we should do that. We can do that. And then what was before that? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> we're out now. <laughs> oh, look, modern. What was go before? Ancient history, prehistory. So prehistory is uh, first. Classical antiquity. Oh yeah, and that's yeah. all the ancient all right. Greeks that's and stuff. Philosophers I known that. <laughs> Is that, that the is, philosopher time? Yeah, it would be all the philosophers and stuff. That's when sure. they were running around. That's why they would have a weird name like that. Every <laughs> everyone else is like very normal named stuff. And then, well, what area did you grow up in? Oh, the classical antiquity. <laughs> that's when we. That's when I was alive. Oh, were you Socrates? <laughs> and Alexander the Great came, and he's like, "When are you alive? The Middle Ages." Uh, yeah. And then the Renaissance. Renaissance is not up there. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Every chart you look at has different different listings. That is, I mean, list the Renaissance. See, look well, at me, look at me under, using Wikipedia, dude. It's under early modern period. It talks yeah. about the Renaissance. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what what is the years of this? So this is basically the 14th century to the 17th century, roughly. But it's mostly the 15, 1600s. Okay. And Why do they always do that? I know. Why does it years. always say 14th century, but it's 1500? So we're in the 20th century? We're in the, we're 21st, in the 21st century. century. Yeah. yeah, 21st century. Why do they always go? Why do they do that? Because we've already had 20 centuries. Yeah. So we're on the 21st one. Yeah. Like the when yeah. it started, we were already, that's our first century. Yeah. 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 So when it was zero... When it was zero, yeah, that was the first. That, that was the first century. We're yeah. So like we're just the Numanium yeah, party. Yeah, yeah. Got the date wrong. Yeah, twenty. You don't think that's weird? It always. I always have to think. Yeah. It's one less than. Yeah. I appreciate you saying that instead yeah. of just making me feel dumb. <laughs> what are you talking about? I think you you'd be said, nice, but no, but you were, I, I, you played it like literally every time somebody's like, no, like no, I do it. 19th century. I have to think. Oh, subtract one. It's the 1800s. Yeah. Every time I have to do that. Yeah. You know, yeah, because it, it is sense. weird. Because you want to go, it's 18th century, the 1800s. Yeah, mm. but it's not. But it's not. So this is basically. So we're leaving the Middle Ages were the Dark Ages. This was your time to shine. There's no charts. There's graphs. Science Just, was kind of looked down on. Yeah. All right. So is, and now we're transitioning to the Renaissance, where air and shine. This is back like science and philosophy and oh man, and learning yeah. education. This is when you oh you loved it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Just dinner conversations, asking everybody <laughs> questions at the table. Uh huh. Renaissance uh-huh. means rebirth. It was kind of like when we get uh-huh. back to learning and education, things like that. So, mm. f- what, do we, what do we say? 14th century? 14th century to the 17th century, roughly. So, that's the 1300s yeah. to the 1600s. Yeah. I wonder if they know. Do they know like we're changing into different times? I guess it's like you name this stuff after. 
Yeah, I think it comes after the fact. Um, but I mean, so many of the famous people, which we'll get into throughout history, all lived in this same short period of time, very close to each other. A lot of yeah. them knew each other. We'll get into some of these people. So there was this movement called humanism, which is basically where it's like a cultural movement where people started talking about not just themselves about God, but more about living for yourself. Yeah, and kind of individual freedoms and stuff like this. This is a lot this, of people doing that now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, this is when the Catholic. This is what Aaron went like. Catholic Church started getting a little pushback, mm. and they were trying to hold people down. Oh, this is where it began. <laughs> yep, this is where it began. Yeah. And you guys uh, stayed strong. Yeah, uh, still doing good. Well, they're doing all right. Doing all right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but uh, you're doing real good. <laughs> yeah, so the biggest one. The biggest. Yeah, is it is Catholics the biggest religion? Yeah, I guess you guys got it all figured out, don't you? You mean the biggest Christian? Yeah, I mean, there's more Muslims than Catholics, right? No, I don't think so. Really? Yeah, and look that up. Hmm. I'm sure we'll find out when they fight. Uh, <laughs> well, this is when the Protestant Reformation started. We talked about this once before. This is where the Baptist and yeah. everybody else started springing up. Kind of some new stuff. Yeah. You got a different T-shirt over here. Yep, yep. And um, when we talk about... Oh, there's more. There's more Muslims. I didn't want to... It sounded like I was way too upset about yeah. it. <laughs> oh, well, man, Let's back more. up a little bit. Yeah, what? I guess if you if you talk about 1.2 billion Roman Catholics, 1.8 billion Muslims. Oh, so if you yeah. if you lump all the Christians together, oh uh, now you need well, us. now yeah, yeah. Here we now come. coming back around. Hey guys, yeah. we were kidding. All that persecution. Yeah. Ah, come on back. Well, let's talk a little bit. No, I didn't uh, know that. The printing press. We talked about that in the inventions. Now everybody can read and get books on their own. And so ideas just started going crazy, and people started living it up. So uh, maybe the most famous. Like this is when reading started to happen? Well, more for yourself. Most yeah. people, you know, couldn't read. And like, I think uh, bishops and monks would read to people. I'm looking at you like you know, but. Uh, yeah, well, that, it, my understanding is that, yeah, like reading was uh, rich, wealthy, the affluent could mm -hmm. read and all the peasants couldn't. So they controlled all the information, dude. Yeah. And then when that got flipped on its head, that's when everything changed. It started, yeah. Yeah. So, so now everybody's reading. Yeah, Even or you could at least spread information and like you couldn't just squelch it out. Yeah, because it's just spreading this so guy, fast. Yeah, it's a like lot a, of this guy. I don't. I don't <laughs> this, this guy's not my type of guy. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the most probably the biggest thing you think about the Renaissance is art. Can you name a famous painting? Uh, Mona Lisa. Yeah, it's from the Renaissance. Oh yeah, yeah. Can you think of anything else? Uh. I don't know. Not, I mean, now that I'm on the spot, you know. Da Vinci Code? Da Vinci Code. Well, that's the movie. Yeah, I was trying to that was leave a great, leave that. That was a great painting. Uh, da Vinci Code. Yeah, that's stupid of me. Uh, da, the, the Da Vinci Code. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, and Lord of the Rings. Go ahead. Uh, the Last Supper? The Last Supper. Yep. yep. Renaissance. Very famous. What about The Scream? You seen that one? The Scream? The Scream, dude. You never seen The Scream? Probably. I bet so, I've seen all these paintings. I don't know. I don't know if I know the names of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. one. Yep. Yeah. The Scream. This might not even be the Renaissance. I, I'm I sorry I brought it up. Yeah, I don't think it is. But uh, yeah, I think it was uh, 1893, so, yeah, not yeah. even close. Sorry. God, so this is when. That was the, uh, <laughs> Come on, Aaron. Know your art, the man. 19th century, Aaron. You stupid. <laughs> Just barely. Almost the 20th. God, almost the 20th. We we're borderline. They were probably already saying we're in the 20th. <laughs> I think I was alive when the screen was yeah, painted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, done by a computer. Yeah. So dumb. So Leonardo da Vinci um, was maybe the most famous painter of the time. He painted the Mona Lisa. He painted the Last Supper. And the Mona Lisa is the most famous painting in the world, mm -hmm. according to Wikipedia is uh so who's the most famous painter now that one guy uh, <laughs> that does Banksy <laughs> Banksy probably I mean I can't I mean, name another probably, one that's not yeah I, I couldn't tell you a painter Banksy's the only one that's people want to buy that stuff right and he pops up out of nowhere it's like you got to have a mystique about you to be a big like with uh -huh. Leonardo da Vinci was he just all around town yeah he was one of the few painters. I think that was famous even in his own time. Yeah. 
So yeah, he was just hanging out. He was just a yeah. Hmm. They didn't have TV. A lot of these guys didn't become famous till after they died too. So it's like, uh, who knows? Who knows what guys living now uh, would will be. be will be famous later. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, Banksy's the only one you I mean you hear because he just pops up. People like uh, mysterious things. Yeah. Well, the Mona Lisa. That's one reason why it said it became so famous. Because I mean, if you guys, I know nothing about art, but I always wonder why is it so famous. I mean, I couldn't do that. But because they tell you it's famous. Well, it just has such a history. Yeah. There's so much history behind it. Um, so it's, a, it's a picture of, of a George Washington was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposedly a painting of an Italian noblewoman, Lisa Gerandini. Oh, sorry. And um, sorry, Lisa. <laughs> I think she's dead now. Oh. But I don't know. I didn't look that up. Um, but King Francis <laughs> uh, had it in his house. I think Napoleon had it at one time. And then it went in the Louvre. Um, it's the highest known insurance valuation valuation in history in 1962 it was insured for a hundred million dollars which is about a billion dollars today wow i like to I'll ask uh, if you ever see someone have a mona lisa you go in and go is that the real thing <laughs> you ask them that and they go no especially uh, when it has a goatee and a mustache no, it's, on it uh, it's just a print <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, you just anytime, anytime you see a famous painting because people have like just pictures of them yeah, yeah. just go is that the real is it the real is one? Is that the real one? Yeah, in your house. In your house, in your apartment. And we talked about on a previous episode, it got stolen once from the yeah. loop. And guy like just put it underneath his jacket or something and snuck out with it. Yeah, now you can't get near it. No, it's in behind bulletproof glass now. Yeah. And uh I don't understand. So, so I, like shoot it? People have thrown stuff at it. Oh yeah. Walk mm-hmm. me through stealing. A famous painting like the Mona Lisa. What do you? What can I do with it? Well, that's the problem. That guy. There's a couple of stories. He says that someone got him to steal it for that for him, mm-hmm. and I guess that person was going to pay him. But then that guy disappeared, and then that guy he says sold six fake Mona Lisas around town that everyone believed Were the was real, real because the Mona Lisa was missing. Hmm. But if you I, if you bought one, it's like you can never really show it. You're just going to get caught, right? That's what I'm saying. If I stole the Mona Lisa, yeah. mm-hmm. I, let's say I just have it in the back of my car. Like, what can I? You know, it's only worth money if somebody pays for it. Yeah. Like, wh- wh- can I just sell this to some? Well, that's what happened. This guy hit hit it for like three years. You're going to sell it, and someone's going to want it. Yeah, but to whom? And like the mob, the mafia. I think they would do. I think they would be able to. How do, do I? It. How do I go about? I think fight. they find you. You think? I they- think if you if you steal the Mona Lisa, I I don't. I think you're gonna. People are gonna know, and then okay. they display it, and because they can't tell anyone, they don't display it. It's just the fact that I think people like the ownership of something. Like it's you know if the Mona Lisa is gone. You I know where it's at. The whole world wants to know where this Mona Lisa is at, mm-hmm. and this guy knows. And so yeah. like yeah, I mean I think you I think there's no way you're not getting caught, but. The thrill of it before that, hmm. Maybe I guess. Yeah. Well, um, it is a- crazy. Why are why is art worth so much? Like, what's the? Because we agree. We just decide. Yeah. We decide that it thing. is. Yeah, we just decide that it is. Yeah, is that like the NFT things? Oh man, I don't really know how those really work. Have you are. have you looked into that at no. all? No, but it's like aren't they buying tweets? Like it does, that doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. And it seems someone said that. Uh, I thought I saw something about it was like even like with Bitcoin. It was like it's like you're, it's all this stuff that's just worth whatever we make it be worth, which is scary because if everybody just you know goes well, I don't want now that's not worth that. Like it's almost like quick cash grabs, mm-hmm. and then if people are like, yeah, we're not doing that anymore, and you're like, you could be like, well, I just spent a million dollars on this. And then it's like, yeah, well, it's over. Yeah. Because people don't want to do it anymore. Like, that's the thing that's scary is you got to pick the thing that's going to be, you know, what was not going to go away, which would be this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, it's like the guys who pay millions of dollars for, like, uh, Barry Bonds' home run ball. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, nobody likes Barry Bonds anymore. And oh, then yeah. That we're just about the tanks in value. Uh-huh. Yep. Crazy. Uh, but that would be 
I, then you just got you got to you got to have enough money to be able to sit on it and be like, yeah, that's his ball, and then you just wait, I guess. But I guess some people don't want to sell it, you know. Mm-hmm. I went they, to the Pablo Picasso exhibit at the Frist Museum in Nashville. <laughs> I just don't understand art at all. I mean, some of it just looked like a kid doodling, yeah, and it's yeah. worth millions of dollars, yeah. yeah. And I just I don't understand it. It's like I think it's like uh you got to picture it and like it's whatever it means to you like it means something <laughs> like so they go you know they're like oh I like how you know i don't know yeah how you know what his thought process was when he made this painting and the story behind it and it's you know people just want to talk mm-hmm. what do you think the thought process behind the the mona lisa is as we look at it uh what's the point of view here i can tell you a couple of things that made it so famous people interpret her smile different ways mm-hmm. it's almost like the the dress uh what was it <laughs> the, the black and blue people see it different ways yeah, and, yeah. and hear different words some people see that as a smile some people they said see it as um she's smirking well, I mean, she had to probably sit there for 15 hours. <laughs> so I'm sure, you know. It's hard to hold a smile. I'm sure, yeah. what, I mean, I, that's what I would be like. I bet it's as simple as like, yeah, he asked me to do this. And it, I was there all day. So <laughs> I'm sorry I wasn't just glowing with positivity. But, yeah. And he goes, he goes, I'm going to do the lips last. I'm like, are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> the painting also could have been her throwing something at him. Because she had to sit there and, they, and she's like, this is rich. I think it should be just her like stretching her back out. She's like, oh my God, dude. How long does it take you to do this? And he's like, I am Leonardo da Vinci. Don't you dare. Tell me to hurry up. He did the lips last, so it's yeah. just just like a hole right around yeah. there. <laughs> She's like, can I rest my mouth? Nah, I haven't no, gotten no, there no, yet. I haven't. Lisa. What's her name, Lisa? Yeah. Yeah. Mona Lisa. She's like, can you add some eyebrows in? Nah, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah that's another thing. She has no eyebrows and no eyelashes. Oh, yeah. Well, because she had to go. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? What does that mean? That she's been sitting there. I think there's a lot of stuff that... Like this, oh, that he didn't we get can to finish it. That we can, uh, <laughs> that we we, and you know, go think about in philosophy, it. and you break <laughs> down all this stuff, and she's smiling, at you and you're making all that stuff in your head, and it's as simple as like she could have had a bad day that day, yeah, and like whatever reason she's like, I don't know, I just didn't like that day was like it was raining. It's like this guy's been, you know, sending pigeons to my house for months, <laughs> being like. Will you paint? And I have to write back and put it in a pigeon's beak <laughs> that my pigeon doesn't grab it as easy. Uh, and then, you know, I think that's how they talk to each other back then. Yeah. Uh, and then you sit there. and But, I mean, it could be. What if stuff is as simple as that? Could be. Could probably be. Probably more of that than we realize and want to admit. Yeah, we do probably look into it more than they even wanted us to. Yeah. We romanticize what did she, it. So what did she do? Nothing. It's just her husband. They think her husband just hired Leonardo da Vinci to paint her. Yeah. And it just became famous. The smile, though, people see it different ways. Her, it used to be the rumor was her eyes would follow you anywhere around the room. I remember hearing that. It kinda, yeah. yeah, it kind of. Um, yeah. Like an optical illusion. And where is she at? You mean, where did he paint her? Yeah. It's like the planet Venus. Yeah I, yeah. I don't think that's where she was. I think that's just what he chose to paint in the background. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you know. What about her hands here? Can you read into that? I mean, what's going on there? That her fingers a little bit. Is more. she there? She looks like she's there against her will. To be honest with you. Yeah. Well, I think she's trying to be the most comfortable. I mean, she yeah. sat there for. She had to have sat there for a long time. How long does it take to paint someone? This oh. took uh, three years. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> she didn't sit there for three years, but he it took him three years to finish it. So why is her smile like that? I don't know. She came <laughs> back and forth for three years, and we're all going, I think she's not happy. Yeah, I would not be either. Her husband said, I want you to paint my wife. And she's like, all right, I'll do it. You know, this is when, I mean, women, I, like, you know, weren't allowed to do anything. Yeah. And so she's got to go sit there. And she's like, I don't know, my stupid husband making me go do this painting. She's from- got a bobblehead. <laughs> yeah. Even better. Mm. So in December 2010, an Italian art his- historian said that you could f- f- see tiny letters and numbers in her eyes, which he said, well, if you magnify it, which was some type of hidden secret, he said. But 
Um, but art historians disagree with that. They's like, no, there's nothing there. It's hmm. just some cracks and stuff. You see anything, Aaron? Yeah, a lot of uh, H's. Uh, <laughs> For humanism. Yeah. <laughs> What word has 40 H's in it? (laughs) (laughs) That's the code. That's the Da Vinci code. That's the Da Vinci code. Uh, What if that that was the Da Vinci code? Just H, 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 H. H. (laughs) Yeah. I read the Da Vinci code books. Yeah? Don't remember anything about them. I could could reread them right now. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see the movies? Yep. The Tom Hanks? Yep. Were they good? Yeah. I don't really remember what it was, but I saw them. I don't remember them. Now. I don't remember anything yeah. about them. The part I do remember is what I'm talking about next is the Last Supper. That was the other Da Vinci's big painting, um, because that's supposed to have some hidden stuff in it, or some people think it does. Art historians don't really think of it. So the Last Supper, the painting is supposed to show Jesus right when he t- tells his apostles that one of them is going to portray him. And just any will do, Aaron. Yeah, I'm trying, I am to, trying with, to find a big one. I am so fine can... with art, though. Like, I know we're making fun of it. Like, none of this means anything. But I am fine with people. If you want something to be worth something and they like it that much, I think that's not a bad thing. If that's your thing and you're into it, then, you know, that if that world of it, like, I get it. I could get, I could see having a crazy painting. I, I, I'm not saying I would even be against, like, you know, if you had, like, some kind of crazy painting, uh, you know, that was something that'd be pretty fun to watch. Yeah. Dead Horse? With Dead Horse with Kevin. Dude. Golly, but they, dude. Uh, I'm bombing trying to find this picture. But there, but I do understand. I, I do get the the re, re, reasoning behind it. I, you know, I could see getting into art. I think you get older and you just go, you could look at it more. That one will do. Yeah. All right. So this is Jesus telling I mean, us. That's a perfect one. Yeah, it is. That's funny that you go, you're like, no, that one works. Uh, the best one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Zoomed in as close as possible. Uh, yeah, go ahead and let's do that one, Aaron. The one that's perfect. Go ahead. All right. Brian, go ahead. So what he did is uh, broke it down in groups of three. Yeah, when two- you said that one would do, I was not looking. So I turned to you, go. You thought it was going to be awful. I thought it would be, something would be off. He goes, he goes, that, you go, that well, one. I was being sarcastic because he tried a hundred that looked. Oh, well, you I was trying to, I, this was the one I was waiting on. Yeah. I was trying to get that, that one nice. Do, and I thought, all right, I guess it will do <laughs> perfectly because it fits the whole screen. It looks like the, I have the last supper thing. <laughs> Just leave that up there. Yeah. Is that the real thing? All right. So 12 apostles, he breaks it down in groups of three. You see, they're all have different expressions. And yeah. so people have interpreted what it means. Let's go left or right. All right. Uh, so those three guys, that's Bartholomew, James, and Bartholomew. Ant- Is that right? It's pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're all surprised. I think that's pretty obvious. Um, Bartholomew. Bartho- yeah. Who? Who and who? Uh, Bartholomew looks like he just showed up and he's trying to, <laughs> he's like, what's going on? Yeah. I can't hear down here. He's yeah. leaning in like, what did he say? What did what's he say? that? What's going on? And he's uh, got a big neck too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh. James, son of Alpheus, and Andrew there with his hands up. Is that oh, what's on man. his middle finger there? Uh, oh, oh gosh, it's the cursor. Probably. <laughs> are you Good night. How old are thought, you, dude? I mean, what that's so the crazy. mouse. Dude. The mouse. <laughs> the mouse. What's at the top? That I thought says, I found uh, something photo. hidden that nobody had ever You're found. You're like watching yeah. a DVD. What's that triangle thing at the bottom? That's the play button, dude. <laughs> that was perfectly on the tip of his finger. Did you ever notice that Google's in the top of this? <laughs> you ever look at the top of it? <laughs> what's that browser? All right. So these are the three. These are like uh, man, the lowest tier for sure. Nobody cares yeah. about these three guys. Why you say that? Just because you don't hear much about these three. They look like afterthoughts. Okay. Why? It just my. Are we not allowed to interpret a painting? And these look are you like saying that it looks like Da Vinci drew the other D nine now. and was. <laughs> and then put those guys in. <laughs> I mean. If you had to talk to the Leonardo da Vinci, if he paints this, and you're like, well, you go be weird about me, dude, because I'm trying to interpret your painting. And he goes, all right, man, I'm sorry. What's your, what does Sunny D mean? You go, it's orange juice. <laughs> and then he's going to go, what? I got to have a conversation with you. You're wearing a hat about juice, <laughs> regular juice. I think Leonardo da Vinci would ask you to leave. I think he'd ask, he'd say, I want to paint you. And you'd be like, well, that's an honor. And then he'd leave and you would sit there for hours. Or he would make you sit there for hours and you go back and it's a cat. And then he's like, and you're like, you didn't even paint me, dude. He goes, you're wearing 
an orange juice hat. <laughs> no, I didn't paint. I'm sorry. I didn't paint you. I bought you a shirt that says pretzels on it. Because <laughs> I guess you're just wearing food clothing now. All right. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Uh, so you're saying those three aren't painted as well as the others? No, I'm just all saying right. these are these aren't the they aren't the stars of the show. Okay, dude. all right, we'll move on. That's all I'm trying. The to next say. three guys, these are Judas, Peter, and John. Yes, these are there. the. I mean, look, these are the three main characters for sure. All right, so Judas, there, he's darker shade on purpose because he's the one that portrayed Jesus, mm-hmm. and he's holding a money bag there in his right hand. Oh the yeah, money got paid. He knocked over the salt. That's bad luck. Oh wow! Yeah, salt shaker yeah. there. He's got a lot going Are these on. These corn dogs on the table. <laughs> I think that's he bread. Should have, Bray should have thrown the salt <laughs> over his shoulder <laughs> to break the. Spell. Is that what you're yeah. supposed to do if you? Yeah, yeah. and I, I do it. I don't. I don't even. I don't. I always do it if I spill it, and I just do. I can't remember which shoulder, so I do both of them. <laughs> <laughs> you were throwing it right into a uh, Thaddeus's face, whatever that guy's name is. Um, Not Thaddeus. See, I already yeah. forgot who it was. Yeah. See, Peter. Peter there in the middle. He has an expression of anger on his face, and he's holding a knife. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Right there. Yeah. And who's next to him? And uh, John. That's, yeah. That's John. Is he furious because he's like, you're telling me you're not a woman, John? Well, <laughs> you jumped ahead, but that's one of the conspiracy theories about this painting. That yeah. That's really Mary Magdalene. <laughs> that's the argument they're having. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's a conspiracy. I would say that's exactly true. <laughs> I mean, it looks just like Mona Lisa. Yeah, it's a woman. The other guys look like dudes. And then, well, I mean, what is it? He's going to be like, what do you mean? Put her name on her shirt? What else do you want me to do? Like, uh, So he painted the other 11 apostles and left John out and put in a woman? I, I mean, that would be what an artist would do, would do something like that. I mean, you're lucky Jesus is even in this. Like, that's <laughs> like... Well, maybe that's what Peter's saying. He's like, I know you're a woman. All right. Then you got Jesus there. Now on the other side, you've got Thomas, James, son of Zebedee, and Philip. Thomas is clearly upset. Phil, calm down. (laughs) And then they called him Phil. (laughs) Tommy, Phil, what are you doing? Jimbo. Jimbo, get in here. Uh, Thomas is upset. He's raising his finger up. Uh, Who's he? Are they yelling at Jesus here? Well, they're all upset because he just told them that one of them you was going to portray me. And they're all like, "What?" Oh, yeah. and this is like right after he said that. This is their reaction to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's very like, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's listening. That's what Peter's mad. Like he's, Peter seems like he's trying to figure out who's going to do it. Yeah, he's got a knife yeah. out. I yeah. think he thinks this lady's doing it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Then so. we got Mister Tomness from Lion Witch in the Wardrobe back here with a finger in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yeah, that was a great reference. <laughs> yikes! What was that a reference to? You know, Lion Witch in the Wardrobe. No, you know, C.S. Lewis. No, I think that was the Renaissance. No, it was, no, it was C.S. The Lewis. Nineteen hundred. Died in the nineteen sixties. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Um, oh God, yeah, got a different. Why don't y'all just start y'all's own podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What are y'all talking about? A podcast for people. You don't, who know dude. Stuff. You don't know that guy. You don't remember him? I don't know. I think so. I, all right, it? look at that. Just soak that in. Yeah. And then, oh, I forgot where we were. Right. <laughs> oh, there, there he is right there. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 What was that movie? Is it a movie? Or it's a... Yeah. I mean, it was a pretty famous book. He wrote books. Yeah. And, and then, then it became that one became movie. a movie. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Missed it. I must have missed it. <laughs> <laughs> the Chronicles of Narnia? You never oh, heard yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know what? I... I think I did. It was a great. I think it was a great movie. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah they were great. Movie, actually. Nate Love is one of his like, favorites. <laughs> I actually did like Chronicles of Narnia, but I was when that came out. I was older. Yeah, like so I would have been the age that would not have uh-huh. went and saw that. He was back to the age that would go see it. But <laughs> I, I was in it. that. I was in that middle <laughs> where, like, I just I never saw, it. and you were a child. And Probably, so, I think I was in middle school when it when yeah. the newer ones I mean, came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's perfect. Yeah, I mean, I was in, yeah, I was 20, you know, what am I, 30, 42, you're 28, right? Yeah, yeah 29. Yeah, 29. So, yeah, 13 years. Yeah, you were 25, 26. Come on, dude. I was I was already starting comedy. I was already in comedy. Yeah. You watched Narnia. <laughs> All right, the last three guys, Matthew, Jude, and Simon, 
uh, both Jude and Matthew are turned towards Simon, trying to a- asking him like, "What's going on here? Why is he saying that?" Yeah, like, "What's up yeah. with this?" Simon looks a little old there, doesn't he? Golly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're just saying, "Why is he saying that?" He's like, "Cause he said he said it. big age range in this yeah, crew." Apostles? Yeah. Well, I think that's the the key. You know, I did it here. Uh, <laughs> the key to success is you got a wide variety. Our savior. Brought us all on. Yeah. He wants different, different. You want different ages, <laughs> uh, you know. So people come from different points of views. Yeah. <laughs> like they're having their own little separate. Well, they're way down there. What again. do they? What do they always say about it being all on one side? Like, yeah, that's a good, good question. Most painters, a lot of painters had done the Last Supper, but they uh, made them around a the table. He purposely put them all on the same side so you could see their faces and their yeah. expressions. Which was that was that was smart. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. This first guy, I can't, especially when you see his feet, like he really is like, can I please be a part of this group? Because he came in. Have you ever been the la- the last guy to show up at a restaurant and they have to pull a table over yeah, and you sit at the end? That's the yeah, worst. a chair over. Yeah, that's what happened to this guy. But he goes, no, nah, I'll be fine. I'm just <laughs> popping in real fast. Uh, what's going on, guys? Anything crazy? Uh, yeah, something <laughs> quite big has happened. <laughs> one of where one, you been? Yeah, where you been? <laughs> Someone's going to betray Jesus, and he's like, well, I wasn't even here. He probably wasn't talking about me. You know, the other thing he did differently than other Last Supper paintings is he put no halos on anyone. All the other mm. ones had halos, and people think he was trying to make an argument that these are just normal guys. I would absolutely think that he did that because everybody else did it. So he goes, I'm not going to do it. That's like what you would have done. That's what I would have done. Yeah. Like, as, a, as a, I think me and him are probably equal artists, mm-hmm. you know, just a couple guys. <laughs> uh, but I'm saying, like, as I think if you're looking like every every painting was around a table and most had halos, well, if he's the, the big dude that's going to do this painting that's been done probably a bunch, mm-hmm. he's like, I got to do it. I got to make it so different and better than everybody else. So no halos, put everybody on the same side of the table. Mm-hmm. Right there is already like, people are like, that's amazing. Already separates it. Already separates it. Yeah. So this painting, the Mona Lisa is in the Louvre in Paris. This is in, in a was painted on a wall in a church monastery in Milan, Italy. It's still there. Oh, really? It's on you the wall? You go see it? It's mm-hmm. just on the wall? I think they said most of it has decayed over time. I think they fill it in themselves, mm-hmm. painting it, but but Yeah. Buy tickets to go see it. I think you gotta see it way in advance. Yeah. I'll get yeah. tickets way in advance. I think I can see it pretty good. Yeah. From here. You get the idea Ooh. of it. <laughs> okay. You wouldn't go see it. <laughs> I would go see it for yeah. sure. I was just kidding. Yeah. Do you guys want to go see the last supper painting? You're like, we gotta take a train over there. You're like, <laughs> that that we are in a time now where everybody would think you're like, I don't know, man. You know. <laughs> Seems like a lot. It's and all you need is something like, well, a lot of it's being kind of going away oh i'm not it's not even i'm not gonna go look mm-hmm. at this line i'm hungry <laughs> yeah. well this was jesus last supper i don't care dude i'm starving well it's not like it's a picture of it yeah. it is it is their picture of, of them i'm saying it's not like it's a picture of the actual it's last a supper photo. yeah yeah that's not a selfie yeah someone didn't take a selfie <laughs> so leonardo he was killing it for a long time yeah then the new hotshot young painter comes on Michelangelo. Oh. Uh, here we go. Now he's got a rival. He's got nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> so Michelangelo, um, he did the Statue of David. It's one of the most famous statues. And he painted the Sistine Chapel, the roof of the, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. And he becomes the new hot hot guy on the scene. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about hot guy on the scene. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's <laughs> later on. <laughs> okay. I wonder how, yeah, what is their age when they're, like, making it? Well, I'll, I'll jump ahead then. So, uh, Leonardo and Michelangelo became big rivals. Yeah. And the church even hired them to both paint on the same wall, their own little thing. And they got into it, like, they hate each other. Da Vinci was in his early 50s, close to my age. Mm. Michelangelo was 29, Aaron's age. Oh. So, now he's the hot guy on the scene, and Da Vinci didn't like it, because he'd always been the guy. Yeah. But this young guy shows up. He's it's kind just, of is that like me and you, Bates? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Michelangelo, was caught, he called him out, made fun of him once, because <laughs> Da Vinci like did a horse head sculpture and didn't finish the head. And he's like, how's that horse? They ran into him in the street and, oh, yeah. and heckled you, him about it. Yeah. 
I mean, can you like that's where your news, you know, you're just seeing can you imagine seeing the two most famous painters just go at it? Yeah. And they just run into each other. This yeah. was in Florence, Italy. Yeah. And uh this ran into each other on the street. Yeah. It reminded me of Derek Zoolander and Hansel. Have you guys seen Zoolander? Mm, I haven't no. seen it. No. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Aaron. Are you gonna say something? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, man. I haven't seen Zoolander. Oh, all right. Uh so Michelangelo painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Have you uh have you been there? No, I haven't. I've been. I've been yeah. to the Vatican. How is know. it? Is it is it breathtaking in person? It is. I mean, there's the one famous, most famous part, the right. Adam touching fingers with God. Uh-huh. But the whole thing's just like, wow, this is pretty crazy. I had always heard, always thought that uh, Michelangelo laid on his back and did this. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, he was up on like a, like a scaffolding, scaffolding on his painted. back. Yeah, uh-huh. that's not true. Well, how did he do it? He just... They flipped the building upside down, and then he drew it? They built, like, things for him to stand on, and he just did this for four years. Really? Four years. He wrote a poem about how his neck hurt. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how did he do the entire ceiling in four years, and Da Vinci took him three years to do the Mona Lisa? Because well, she was busy. She had a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Michael he goes, I'm not going to do this <laughs> if he... I'm paying you good money, and then, you know... So later they figured out that that God scene right there, that's the shape of the human brain. Oh. Oh, yeah. Like his feet are like the stem of yeah. the brain. The whole oh, thing. wow. And they don't think that's by chance. They think he did that, to, you know, mm-hmm. they, uh, short message. Yeah. I would like it if everything's like, yeah, he did that on purpose, right? He goes, oh, dude, my neck was... <laughs> I was going to go a little bit farther, and I was like, I got to get out of here. Dude, I gotta, this is, you know... So later on, um, I'm a hundred feet in the air on some real rickety wood. I mean, like old timey wood, yeah. like where you're, you're like, uh-huh. you know, it's just like every, it's like moving. You're like, oh god, kids are running around down there. I mean, it's high, right? Yeah, uh, it's very high. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, he uh, painted them many of the figures nude, and then the Pope's like, no, you got to cover them up. This is disgraceful, and then. 1960s, uh, Pope Pius the Fourth. I'm sorry, not 1960s, 1560s. They eventually painted, repainted them again, and took the clothes off of them. Well, it's the original form. <laughs> the Pope insisted. Yeah, he was yeah. like, "No, let's go make them yeah, make it go. again." Oh, I forgot to mention too in, <sighs> in uh, the Last Supper that Da Vinci. You'll appreciate this. He's a delicate genius. Someone complained about how slow he was going, so he's like. I'm going to put Judas's, that guy's face on Judas. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. There's a guy at the church that said, why is it taking so long? And then yeah. he was like, you know what? I've been having a hard time coming up with Jesus, Judas's face. It's going to be that dude. And that's what that yeah. guy looked like. Apparently. Right yeah. There. yeah. <laughs> it looks like a guy that would ask, why is it taking so long? <laughs> There, I mean, that's so funny. Be like, all right, that's fine. You're going to be remembered forever. Yeah. <laughs> Just that pity. That's what I mean, though. Like, when they're saying, what does this stuff mean? Yeah. Like, it's this big thing. Right there pity. should be your answer. Yeah. He put whoever, nobody, as the face, the main face. Basically, Jesus and then Judas, maybe the main two faces in it. Mm. Those are the two most probably looked at. Kind of like we were trying to figure out, maybe even possibly more than Judas, more than anybody. Yeah. Because, because he's the one. And so that important part of a painting, he was petty enough <laughs> to put a guy's face on it just because the guy asked, How long is it going to take? Hey, man, you're going to wrap it up in here pretty soon? Yeah. 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 I'll be done uh, actually pretty quick now. So <laughs> thanks. Thank you, dude. You so, like, that. they want to make it, it's like all this, like, you know, I think when you're like he's doing it, it's I'm sure there there obviously is like he's thinking about stuff, but you go do, but always remember before you get down some big rabbit hole. Yeah. He put a dude, just a regular guy's face on it because he didn't like the question the guy <laughs> asked. So that guy, he still has that in him. Uh-huh. You know? That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, this was done in the fifteen hundred. We have five hundred years of just coming up with stuff that probably never even happened. Mm-hmm. He was yeah. just mad at a guy. If that even did that happen for sure, we don't even know that happened. No, we didn't know that happened for sure, but that's a story. I love that story though. I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend it is. So Michelangelo is now the big hot guy on the scene, but a younger guy comes along on him, Raphael, Mm. and now 
Michelangelo. Starting to pick up on some. <laughs> this would be your new rival. I don't Tanner Newcomb or somebody. <laughs> like whoever the new hot guy is on the is scene. Is the next guy Splinter? <laughs> the guy after Raphael? Michelangelo famously said Calabunga while painting the Sistine Chapel. No, he didn't. Oh. <laughs> I saw your eyes get big. Like, yeah. oh. Did he? I wouldn't believe that. Uh, when does Shredder come along? <laughs> <laughs> Shredder was in the Renaissance. He developed a way for paper to be torn into small parts. Yep. And no, that's joking. I'm lying. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody knew that. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if you you were looking at me like. No, I knew that was a joke because I could, you know, I could tell. Well, why are the Ninja Turtles named after all these guys? Now do you know? I mean, do you know about the... No, I don't know why, but I mean, they, they are. As we're picking up some steam, it <laughs> seems like it's heading that direction. Donatello's got to be probably coming up, right? <laughs> Donatello was there. He was there around. You go. Wow. So they yeah. named off her. The, yeah. All right. So all these great painters, sculptors came on the scene. The term Renaissance man, have you heard that? Mm -hmm. It's for someone who can do... Because he's great at many, many things. Yeah. Golf. <laughs> comedy. Oh, if you're... If you're great at a lot of stuff, yeah, you're a renaissance man. I'm a man. renaissance man. Philosophy. I'm great at philosophy. Lawyer. <laughs> and Leonardo da Vinci was the original renaissance man they gave it to it. Because he only... Not only did that, he invented like a prototype for a helicopter. Yeah, I've seen that. Well, yeah. they probably go, stay in your lane, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> well, does this guy want to... He wants to... I'm not going to get in got. his... I'm not going to get in his helicopter. <laughs> he called it the aerial screw. <laughs> <laughs> it was basically a big screw that just... You get enough momentum, and get That's going. the drawing of it. Yeah, I've seen people go back and and recreate these from from his sketches, and they a lot of them work. Yeah, he, he was trying he to, was trying to fly. He was inventing yeah flying machines and yeah. stuff. Yeah, he was trying to. He just tried to do a lot of stuff. He, he invented a, a big parachute that was just a a pyramid or a triangle, depending on how you look at a it. A triangle. Yeah, look at that. Look at that pyramid. Yeah, parachute. And somebody built that and it worked. Oh, wow. All right. Mm -hmm. Also during this period, <laughs> Rene Descartes. Hey. Oh, yeah. We talked about Rene. I think, therefore I am. Yeah. Became the most famous saying of all time. time. Mm -hmm. Until he ran into Michelangelo on the street. And Michelangelo said, Calabanga. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> all right. William Shakespeare. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> You're not buying it? Huh? <laughs> no, I mean, it's just brutal. I imagine listening to this is going to be like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, hey, dude, people are listening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, for yeah, yeah. No. People what, are listening to this. William Shakespeare came on but during the same time. He became the most famous playwright of all time. Yeah. It's A lot of, of movies made today are still. It's kind of blow past him. <laughs> and we spent a ton of time on these artists. And then just uh, old Billy Shakespeare also is around. Anyway, uh, I mean, he's like, he's arguably the most important one out of everybody. Yeah. William Shakespeare is, I mean, the guy. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, when you think of Renaissance, I think most people think Da Vinci or Michelangelo, but... They don't think of William Shakespeare? I mean, the Renaissance started in Florence, Italy, so I think oh. they think of art and stuff like that. Shakespeare lived during that time, but he was in England. Oh, they were doing other stuff? Well, I mean, he, they were doing plays and stuff. But the Renaissance is not just in general. It's just it's, it's, a, it's where it actually was. Um, I mean, it's that general period in Europe, but it started in Florence, Italy, and, yeah. and then kind of spread out. So I think when they think of Renaissance, it's art, which obviously plays are art. But yeah, I mean, like, William Shakespeare is more impactful than Leonardo da Vinci. Especially for, for us. Yeah. As far as books and plays and movies and such. Yeah, everything. That, that was my old joke about. He invented a bunch. He invented, we did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the words he invented. Yeah. I mean, he's, you know. He did I lot. think he could walk in. I wonder if they ever met. Were they around at the same time? Uh, he came along late 1500s. They probably were alive, maybe. 16th century. Um, yeah, 16th century. <laughs> yeah, same time. All these guys were the most famous um, astronomers all at the same time. Copernicus, mm. um, he was the first person that came up with um, you could uh, that the Earth was not the center of the universe. Mm. And everybody yeah. accepted it, right? And then he had no problems yeah, after no, that. No, they did not go with no. it. He Because uh, everybody thought the sun was the center of the universe. Yeah. And then he said, 
I mean, I'm sorry, the Earth was center of the universe. And he said, no, the sun is center of the universe. It's not the center of the universe we know now, but it's the center of the solar system. Yeah. And that we revolve around the sun. And the Catholic Church did not like that. So they had this, the Roman Inquisitions, which is where they basically would investigate anybody that said anything that went against the Bible. And they felt like that went against it. So they said it was a foolish and absurd thought. And his book that he wrote about it, they uh, put it in the index of forbidden books. You weren't allowed to read it or buy it. Yeah, this. Uh, yeah, could they sell it still? I don't no. know if he was selling it. Um, well, like, why would they? Why would they put it in a section that's called forbidden books, <laughs> and you still go get it? And you're like. No, no, no. It says forbidden on it, though. And you it just, go, it's just got its own shelf. Yeah. <laughs> Very bad forbidden like, well, just, books. Well, just get rid of it, though. Just throw it away. And he goes, no, no. Uh, that, what, yeah. That's the point. I made a sign. Those books are forbidden. Yeah. Forbidden's like a pretty tough word. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's not, you know, like we suggest. It's like those are forbidden. Yeah. That's a word that you're going to, I mean, you're going to be like, well, I want to go read all those books now. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it had the, what is it called? The Barbara, Stry- Barbara Streisand effect. What's that? It's when you ban something that actually increases the amount of people that want to go check it out. They banned her? She had some movie. I don't remember. I don't know where that name comes from. She had a movie that they tried to cancel it or something and that actually caused an uptick. Because people are so interested. The Catholic Church did? No, not the the Catholic Church. Yeah, just, I don't know. I don't know who, but not the Catholic Church, no. okay. It's called the Barbara Streisand Effect? Yeah. And so she had something that made her... Cancel. Was it Yentl? Mm-hmm. And then they went and did. The Streisand effect is a social phenomenon that occurs when an attempt to hide, remove, or censor information has the unintended consequence of further publicizing that information off to via the internet. Oh, okay. I had it a little backwards. It's after Barbara Streisand, whose attempt to suppress the California Coastal Records Project photograph of her residence in Malibu inadvertently drew further attention to it. Okay, so somebody took a picture of her house. She tried to censor it, and then that caused a lot of people to go check it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like they go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is 2003, so this is when the internet. Yeah, if you tell someone don't go look at something, everybody goes and looks for it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know it seems crazy. That they but if you put a book. The Streisand effect. I mean, I feel like that's been happening forever. You know, yeah. I mean, like, for, like we're now like, I oh, would call this Streisand. Like, it's like, that's her idea to go. What if you call this Streisand effect? You guys ever think about something like that? You're like, what are you talking about? Do you, I mean, what's the, isn't there a rule of thumb just in life is like, you want to do something that someone tells you not to do. Yeah. And now in 2003, we. It took that long before we gave it a yeah. name. Oh, uh, you know what called the Streisand effect? It makes no sense. It's nothing like, even buddy would even want that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Social phenomenon. Because what are you crazy, dude? The whole oh god. <laughs> How do people But if you if you if I was told a book is now a forbidden book, yeah. I would I mean I probably wouldn't read a book. Yeah, but you it, would want to do it and everybody since the beginning of time would want to do it. That's the whole point of it, is you want to uh, Adam and Eve. Eve, don't eat that apple. She eats that. It started there. <laughs> and we give it the name, the Streisand Effect in 2003. The ego of these people, that re- whoever made this, is pure insanity. That they go, oh, let's call it now the Streisand Effect. Oh, that's the worst. Because uh, I said, don't, no, don't go look at my picture of my house. And then everybody went and looked at a picture of her. Like, oh, maybe that is something. Oh, you think it is? Oh, well, all right. <laughs> so Galileo. That's crazy. Am I wrong? <laughs> no, you're not wrong. Mike Masnick of Tech Dirt coined the term in 2005. What? Man, yeah, he came up with it. And people just were in the and, and I've heard it a lot. I mean, have you have you, you ever heard, heard that heard said it. before? The Streisand so I did get photographs of urinals. Maybe this is just <laughs> for the internet. Yeah, it's like an internet. Yeah. Oh. It's the Streisand. I mean, pretty new. it's the effect. I would. I've never heard this. And have y'all heard this? No. Oh, uh, I, I. I've never. I've never heard it. And I would think. I mean. So listen to this. Before she filed a lawsuit to get the picture taken down, it had been downloaded six times, 
and two of those downloads were from her own attorneys. Yeah. Then she filed the lawsuit, and because it got so popular, 420,000 people downloaded the picture after that. Talk about a backfire. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a backfire. Like, a, uh, it just doesn't make sense that it's like you know that's the strides. It just seems weird to name it after it, her. To name it after her and be like, yeah, I, like I mean, did I could have been a lawyer apparently in two thousand three and told her, <laughs> yeah, if you do this, a lot of people are going to notice that you're doing this, and then more people are going to come up with it, right? I mean, who figures this out right now? I thought I didn't know what she I, I didn't know what this was. The barber strike like I was like, what? Why would they call it that? What did she do? Crazy. Yeah. So Galileo. Um, he came along after Copernicus. He was a college dropout. He was the first person to use the telescope to study the sky. Copernicus was doing all his for They were just doing it looking in other people's apartments before that. And he and he just one day, accidentally knocked it, and it went to the moon. And he goes, "Oh," huh. and then that's how. And then he gets to be, he gets to be. Uh, who is it? Copernicus? Yeah. No, yeah. this is Galileo. Galileo. But- Galileo. <laughs> like they just yells out that he just. Oh, he drops a pin, and then he's. What and he's just looking at the moon. And goes, he was just a voyeur. Huh. Like- Having yeah. to look up? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so Copernicus just straight up just looked? Yeah. The, Do you yeah. know your telescope goes up higher? <laughs> what? <laughs> it does, I thought it just goes straight ahead, and that's why I was only looking at my <laughs> neighbors. And they go, no, no, no. If you you can make it point up a little bit higher. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> He was the first to do it, so he invented the telescope. It doesn't say he invented it; it just says he was the first person to he use. He bought the telescope. one at Radio Shack and then <laughs> used it. And they go, "Are you guys using?" it? He goes, "No, we just invented it." Um, mm-hmm. did he invent it? Several people yeah. claim that they invented it, but okay. credit usually it's goes to <laughs> Dutch eyeglass maker Hans Lepershey, sixteen oh eight. He filed for the first patent. All right. Yeah. Well, Galileo also said that the Earth revolved around the sun. He also found moons on Jupiter and rings on Saturn. So he was killing it with a telescope. Mm-hmm. But his views of the Earth revolving around the sun got him put under house arrest because he wouldn't back off. Well, yeah, he had to recant it, but they still put him under house arrest. The Roman Inquisition, again, did this. And he spent the, reasonable guys. He spent the rest of his life <laughs> in house arrest. And then in 1979, so you and I were already alive. Yeah, yeah. I was in college. Uh, No, I'm joking. Pope John Paul II did an investigation of the Catholic Church's condemnation of Galileo. 359 years later, they ruled that he was owed an apology and acknowledged that they were wrong in their judgment. See, it takes a big man to admit their mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 359 years later. (laughs) I mean, there's no trace of like a relative alive. (laughs) And then you, you you know what? Hey, sorry about that, man. You know, you just saying it to whoever. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So we're even now. Yeah. You know. Uh, Isaac Newton, also there in this time, he came along, came up with the laws of motion, laws of universal gravity. Yeah. A lot of people think Apple fell on his head. Yeah, that that's where probably it got not happened, but he did see an apple fall and and asked, "Why does it always go straight down instead of sideways or up?" Because hmm. we're not magic. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I was saying. <laughs> why doesn't it go? Why doesn't that apple always fall sideways? Yeah. I don't know, weirdo. Yeah. Why would it? <laughs> As you say to him, and he's like, "All right, all right, that's fair enough." <laughs> yeah, <good> yeah, <laughs> uh, and that's when he figured out gravity. Yep. A lot of weird myths with apples, you know? I grew up being told that uh, George Washington chopped down a... Oh, that's a cherry. Never mind. Yeah. It's a different kind of... Well, tri- um, do you have any other myths? Sorry, I'm sorry I brought that the, up. Yeah, one of the myths is you think there's a lot of myths about apples. <laughs> that's also added into the apple myth. <laughs> the Weber effect. There... Uh, <laughs> when, so when he saw that apple fall, he just said, why does it always fall down? And then he went and... Figured it out. Yeah. Figured out gravity. Yeah, he has three laws. Did he has to make up the word gravity? Maybe. Because it's not like the word just floating around. Like there's a gravity walking around. 
<laughs> and he just hasn't been assigned anywhere yet. He goes, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll put you there. You kind of work with this Apple thing. Man. And I bet somebody goes, do oranges fall down? He goes, yeah, I mean, it's like basically everything. <laughs> like he, he has to always, what about if a tree with it, it's going to go, yeah, it's going to go down. What about George Washington cherry tree? What about George Washington? When they fall down. And they go, I don't know who George Washington is, but in theory, he would fall straight down. Do you know the, the story about him chopping down the tree? That's all fake, too? Oh, I didn't know it was fake. All right. So the whole I cannot tell a lie that's made up. I think it's just like a myth. It's like uh, Johnny Appleseed or somebody. Oh, mm-hmm. Another Apple reference. Yeah. yeah there's one. There's, there's one. There's at least one other one. Johnny Appleseed doesn't exist. I thought it was like Paul Bunyan. Like it's just a mythical yeah. figure. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. If we had to internet access, <laughs> yeah. figure this out. Um, famous explorers all during this time period. Magellan. First person sell, sell all the way around the world. That's got to be pretty cool when you don't even know, and then you just show up in the back door of where you started. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, what did he say? It took a couple days, and you're like, I don't know if you made it all the way around the world. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> he's like, God, dude, that was pretty quick. <laughs> he didn't even make it himself. He didn't. But his ship did. The t- of the 260 original crewmen, only 18 survived the three-year journey. Wow. And so they, and the goal of it was to go around the world. Well, the goal was it. There were Spice Islands, I think, which is near China, mm-hmm. and um, but to go west, no, to go east, they had to go all the way down around Africa and go back up. And they're like, if we could find a shorter route, I bet if we just go due west, we could find a shorter route. It was not shorter, but yeah. they didn't know how big the world was. Yeah. yeah. So he flew. He took his ships, went all the way down, I think near the tip of South America to Chile, went through the Strait of Magellan, as it was later called. And um, a lot of people died along the way. They got in some fights with some people and a lot of people died. But Oh, like they like pirates or like uh, there, Native, there's people everywhere. Native Americans yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I think he tried to convert some to Christianity and and yeah. they didn't go for I'll it. I'll talk to him. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of that. Yeah. What's that? I'll talk to him real fast. Uh, <laughs> hey. Uh. So, um, yeah, it was a three-year trip, I think. Yeah, three-year journey before they got back. So he didn't survive. He didn't survive. No. Nope. But then the other guys did. Yeah, 18 yeah. of them. Yeah. Two sixty. If only 18 survived out of 260? Yeah. Can you imagine? How long before you're like, is this worth it, dude? Well, you're in it, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I don't think I'm you're- out. Yeah, I don't think you go. This isn't worth it. Let's uh, fly home. <laughs> it's you're in it. Well, just jump out and live somewhere else. You're like everyone's dying on this boat. Well, every time they jump off these, they get murdered by Native <laughs> Americans. Like they're, I mean, they're just going into other people's land, and they're like, I don't know. What do we live here? You're like, I don't know, because they apparently don't want us here. Because there's not, not a truck stop or somewhere. They're like <laughs> not little not truck stops. Like to go villages set up. Can you imagine not knowing how big the world is? Like you just are going, and you're like, I don't. And it's just water day after day after yeah. day. Mm-hmm. And then you see some land, and you go to that land so happy just to get a runoff. Mm-hmm. And you're like, how are these people? And those people are like, what? Who is this coming up on this, <laughs> yeah. this boat, dude? Yeah. Like, how, yeah. how crazy wrapping your head around that? Just being like, there's a boat. There's people. That would blow your whole world up. You just sit there. You're on, you know... Just you're like in you're in Hawaii, like you're just you're just in an <laughs> island, in the middle of nowhere, and then something comes up that's someone else, and you're like, what? And it's and it's coming from these these guys that are like talking about all this crazy smart stuff. Yeah. And I mean, those guys, you go there, they're Native Americans. They might be two hundred years behind where you're at. Like they might be, I think. Right? Has anybody been to these other fourteen ninety two? Mm-hmm. Uh, Columbus, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Yeah. So, when yeah. was this? This was before that. This was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it was around the same time, around fifteen hundred. So it's about the same time. Sixteenth yeah. century. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No. So, uh, but yeah, they made it all the way around. First got to do it. Seinfeld's yeah. favorite explorer. Remember that Magellan? Yeah. And he's like Magellan. George said that. And he's like, yeah, man. Circle the world. Yeah. Who's your favorite? And George says, I like De Leon. He's like, what'd he do? He discovered the Mississippi. And then George, Jerry's like, oh, like we wouldn't have found that anyway. <laughs> yeah. You remember yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. So Ponce de Leon did discover the Mississippi. He was the first person, first European to cross over the Mississippi. 
Uh, Christopher Columbus, he made a few trips. <laughs> Ended up, I uh, thought it was the the Indies. That's why the name Indian yeah. comes from, because he called them that, what, the East Indies. Um, and they're like, that's John. <laughs> <laughs> His regular name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, hey guys, you the indie? I mean, like, <laughs> now nah, I'm Chris. Chris, <laughs> this is Tom. Yeah, he wrote home and said uh, these these people aren't very smart. I showed them a sword and would them cut their hands by grabbing it. That's how dumb they are. So oh. he wasn't very nice toward the natives that he met there. He they enslaved a lot of them and yeah. Yeah. even brought them home. And then the queen was like, "No, don't don't do this," and sent them back. Wow. Yeah. wow. So, you know, Columbus saw manatees. For the first time, and he thought they were mermaids. He wrote about it in his diary. Yeah, he said, like, "I saw we saw mermaids over here, and they are not as good looking as everybody's." Yeah, <laughs> he's like they're way more some masculine. Big, <laughs> some wide hip mermaids. <laughs> there he goes. I mean, just he thinks like, "Ooh." He goes, "Did you guys uh, hang out with one of them?" He's like, "I trust me, you don't want to." <laughs> Oh, did you bring any on board? Ah, uh, no. I, I, mean, I don't think I we had, I, I'll be it. honest with you. I don't think we had enough food. That's the. I mean, I just. He goes, "What do you mean?" He goes, "You know what I mean, right?" Like, I forgot what I meant. I mean, it is yeah. just. Uh, but he he wrote in his diary. He was like, "We saw yeah. some mermaids." She's a big gal. It's crazy, yeah. and they and they're just not nearly as feminine as we liked. <laughs> yeah, you he know. goes, "Oh, were they beautiful?" He goes. <laughs> Not these. Uh, the ones I found were just, you know, uh, all right, you know, you remember Johnny's wife, right? Like, you know, and he goes, he's everybody goes, all right, you know Johnny's wife, right? I mean. Just for a point of if Just, just, just so just, you get it. Yeah. Bigger than that. And they go, what? <laughs> bigger than Johnny's wife? They go, he goes, yeah. Oh, yeah. He goes, now I was above, I was looking in the water, and, you know, they don't move quick, but. Yeah, their faces are just look like a horse <laughs> and just not attractive. Because I know a couple guys that hung out with them, but I didn't, I didn't <laughs> had nothing. I had nothing. I, I was like, I don't think so, man. I think there's, I'll wait until I find the next batch. Do you think that was it? Do you think you'd been selling for months and months and finally they see that and think, think it's a woman? Well, imagine never having seen anything that looks like that. Mm -hmm. and you've heard tales of mermaids, and then you see that, and you're like, is that what they're saying? Yeah. Man, they're not. And then he goes, oh, these dumb Indians grabbed my sword. <laughs> Can you believe how stupid they That's the same, in the same sentence, that's what the guy goes. Mm -hmm. It's all these just fat mermaids, dude. <laughs> I don't know. Then what'd you do? I gave these Indians a sword. They grabbed it. They grabbed it and cut their hand. How stupid are they? All right, anyway. Uh, these mermaids, let me talk about the mermaids again. They do these fat you know, <laughs> Man. I'll do a couple more. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, did I say, did I, which one did I already do? DeSoto? Or no, we haven't done DeSoto. We've done Ponce de Leon. Oh, yeah. I, I got that wrong. De Le DeSoto is the one that discovered the Mississippi. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ponce de Leon was looking for the fountain of youth. Fountain of youth. Yeah. And he was really just in Florida. <laughs> um, he thought he found it. but Oh, can't you go to it where he found it? I think there is yeah. a place. It's called Bimini or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he got attacked pretty quickly <laughs> by some Native American. He didn't. He didn't survive. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's, that's kind of a common trend. Here. That's yeah. I mean, just like every time you go there, you just go, oh, look at that. Let's go see what that. All right, all right, all right. Just they come out. I mean, they just know how to. They lived it. Yeah, yeah. It's a home game. Yeah, it's a home game. <laughs> Amerigo Vespucci. That's who America's named after. No, I don't. I don't know if I ever did that. Nah, I didn't know that either. Really? Named after a, a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. What? Did, what did he do that we get the name? Well, he was one of the first people to find the New World as well. Okay. And Columbus may have beaten him, but the the guy who makes the maps gave the credit to Amerigo Vespucci and called it America. We do not have a Columbus Day, and we have a Columbus Day. We don't have. I've never. I don't never. I don't know if I knew this. Did yeah. you know it? Uh no, I, I but I feel like we gave him the name of the country. Columbus know, but, can have a day. Well, so it's but even. we don't even know who this guy is. Like this guy's not talked about like Christopher Columbus. No, 
No. And I mean, it's named, I know it's like, oh, well, it's named after, but I'm not thinking it's, I never thought it's named after a guy. How do you spell his last name? Uh, B E S P U C C I. You ain't asking how to spell Christopher Columbus. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> Maybe that's why Christopher got more popular. Oh, Amerigo. Amerigo Vespucci. Vespucci. I'm looking at the, the news. Italian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, so that's geez. who America is named after. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> they like that guy. I mean, that's that's crazy that they named after America after him. He's like, no, I'm like, if he showed up, he's like, no, this name. Where you live is named after me, and they're like, "Yeah, I beat it, dude, beat it." But it was just because Christopher of- Columbus comes in, just shoves his face <laughs> like just with his hand, and goes, you "Just get out of here." Oh wow, I had no idea. But it was just a German map maker that called it America for him. I mean, so that just shows how easy so you could just be the right place, right time. Yeah, yeah, and always be prepared with a fun name <laughs> that could be a different place. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right, we already talked about that. Golf. Yeah. Golf started taking off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, St. Andrews Wink Course was created during the Renaissance. Yeah. The first course ever is right next to St. Andrews. East East Lothian, Scotland. Is yeah. it Guinness Book World Records? As the first. oldest, the Musselburgh Lynx. Yeah. Yeah. 1672. I think as you can go play it. Uh I mean everybody goes to play St. Andrews, but like that one too is it's the first course. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, that's a yeah. Yeah. That's about it. it. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Nate was wanting to hear. <laughs> yeah, we got through that one. Uh, <laughs> maybe we won't do all of these. <laughs> we learned some stuff today. We did. Uh, I did. Yeah, but remember, people are listening. Yeah, but people I'm just are. Yeah. No, I, what was I that liked from? It. I liked this from you. Yeah, <laughs> from a couple episodes ago. Oh yeah, yeah. you were getting bored. We were like, "You're not interested." I, look, I am, but people are listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, everybody should. Yeah. Everybody should live by that. Yeah, people are listening. Right. I think they stopped a while ago, but they're. <laughs> you know, this is for one where yeah something's got to happen. <laughs> so if you're seeing this, it's I mean, what's the next time period we're doing? Giraffe the Jurassic period. I would do that. You would do like some dinosaur stuff. Yeah, we'll do some dinosaur stuff. Is um, Jurassic, or maybe yeah, yeah, or the. I, don't, I can't even name another. We probably should just call it dinosaurs. Yeah, we can do a dinosaur one. You know. <laughs> yeah, this is all stuff we'll figure out on our own. It's not your responsibility. <laughs> listen to this to to have to worry about this. We make them leave comments. They have to be funny on this. Oh, they got to come. People ask, "How do you guys decide episodes?" And that was. They got a little glimpse. They got a glimpse into it. <laughs> into the creative process yeah. there. Yeah. It's the I writer's do, uh, room. A lot of it on my own is how <laughs> they get decided. It is tough to figure out which ones. It's hard to figure out ones that, because you want them to be something that we can talk about and be funny. Yeah. That's why philosophy was fun. Yeah. Because philosophy is about, it's a lot of different things. Middle Ages was fun too. Like, But it was, uh, not saying that this wasn't fun. Right. But they're, but it's, you know, but it's like trying to find, you got to find stuff that's like very kind of open, like, I don't know, that makes your brain like kind of think and you can make a lot of jokes. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, you know, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to it at some point. Uh, you know, that's the, they said it takes a hundred episodes to figure out how to do a podcast. And Did I mean, they really? That's what a lot of people say. I don't, we're never going to get to that number, but it was, <laughs> it's. You try. <laughs> it's two years. Uh, no, nah, we'll be. All right. Everybody, thank you for listening, as always. Uh, we love you, and I'm, I hope some of y'all love this. All right. Bye.